It is FOI 101. Government information is your information. How to get it. Uh, I'm Bob Mackin. Thanks for joining me tonight on Zoom. And we're recording this for a future reference. Now, government information is your information, how to get it. A lot of people have a lot of things to say about freedom of information. Nothing so diminishes democracy as secrecy. That's from Ramsey Clark, former US Attorney General in 1967. Citizens cannot challenge unlawful government action unless they know about it. Retired Supreme Court Chief Justice Beverly McLaughlin, 2009. Press releases tell us when federal agencies do something right, but the Freedom of Information Act lets us know when they do not. That was US Senator Patrick Leahy in 1996, a leading voice in the United States uh, about freedom of information. As you'll learn, freedom of information really is something that came from south to north, and it's something that we gotta fight to, uh, fight to keep in many ways because uh, politicians love and hate the idea of FOI, asterisk. They love it when they want power. They hate it when they have power. That plays itself out regardless of which side of the spectrum the politicians come from, left, right, or center. It's, it's always the same. When they're running for office, they'll tell you how they want transparency and openness, and they'll deliver it to you if you vote for them. When they get in office, they find out that the uh, levers of power uh, are vast, and uh, then they sour on the idea and secrecy takes over. Sometimes there's a little bit of sunshine, but never the amount of sunshine that they promise, never the amount of sunshine that you deserve. Uh, freedom of information really is the best way to keep them accountable. Uh, but freedom of information is a way that uh, politicians, again, have abused the system in the past. Uh, this is a humorous cartoon from back in the uh, 2000s from the province. You can see a bit of a humorous, uh, sad tombstone, uh, freedom of information. The politicians love to hold on to the information as long as they can. And sometimes freedom of information requests can take on a new life of their own. Um, don't worry, it's not this bad, but uh, it can be bad. It can be a multi-year battle to get information that sometimes finds its way through the courts, but I've been able to extract information out of governments to my satisfaction. And of course, uh, Gordon Campbell uh, was one of those politicians who promised to give a new era of openness in British Columbia after the NDP in the 1990s uh, brought in the law at the start of the 90s. And by the end of the 90s, the law was really uh, a shadow of what it should have been and could have been. And Gordon Campbell promised better. He came to power in 2001. And by 2002, he was already going back in his promises. Um, so that's a, an editorial cartoon from Ingrid Rice from back in 2002. Now, freedom of information, the history from 1965, as I said, it came south to north. Barry Mather was an NDP MP, private member's bill inspired by the US. He was from Vancouver Island and uh, tabled in the House of Commons. And as, freedom, as private member's bills often happen, they uh, do not come to fruition. Uh, but uh, 1983, it was uh, Pierre Trudeau as prime minister in his liberal government. 1983, Canada got an access to information law. It's called access to information federally. Provincially, it's called freedom of information and protection of privacy. Access to information, ATI or ATIP and BC, FOI or FOIA. Well, 1993 was when under the uh, NDP administration of Premier Mike Harcourt, former mayor of Vancouver, BC got its own Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy Act, and the Attorney General back then was Colin Gableman. Um, and going back to this, uh, just Barry Mather came, actually came from the media. He was a, uh, an ex-Vancouver Sun humor columnist. Um, so he saw the humor and also the sadness of government secrecy. Uh, and actually, when he was uh, tabling this law, the Globe Mail said that there's nothing like the spotlight of publicity to improve a man's democratic manners. That's what the Globe Mail said back in 1963. And of course, uh, being a media outlet, they were they were only so happy to to support it. 
Um, of course, uh, when the NDP back in 1993 enacted it, it uh, didn't take long for various politicians and officials to find ways to get around it. And one of them was Ken Dobell, who was Gordon Campbell's right-hand man. Uh, he actually said in 2001, when he came to power as deputy minister, that uh, he deletes his emails all the time as fast as he can. Quote, I don't put stuff down on paper that I would have 15 years ago. So they were already trying to find ways to get around it. Um, you know, the reference to Pierre Trudeau, 1983, well, by 2015, his son, Justin, became prime minister, and uh, he was promising disclosure by default. That was his slogan in the 2015 campaign. Uh, the one thing that uh, he did do is the $5 service charge stayed, but uh, you don't pay a penny more for information you receive from the federal government. I'll explain a little bit more about some of the uh, horror stories you get uh, provincially through uh, the NDP government. Of course, 2015, there was the uh, famous BC Liberal triple delete scandal. Uh, the NDP promised a duty to document law that still hasn't come to fruition. So here is a little bit about me. Um, I was called an FOI warrior. I used to contribute to the TIE. I found freedom of information to be very useful to tell the public Again, what's not in the press releases, what's not in the news releases, what the public needs to know about how their government spends the money and how the government does when it comes to uh, improving our communities, to uh, keeping our communities safe, uh, you know, healthcare, education, environmental protection, uh, justice. You can find out a lot about what our government does behind the scenes by using the Freedom of Information Law and uh, I've, I've done it successfully. And I have also been uh, uh, branded a bit of a troublemaker by the political parties back uh, when this story came out back in 2015, some uh, friends of the BC Liberals were trying to say that I was costing the government millions of dollars by making FOI requests. Uh, it just so happened to be that the political parties were also spending, were also, if you take that line of reasoning or logic, they were also causing a lot of uh, expenditures. Uh, but when it comes down to it, this is really about the government spending your money to run a censorship operation to keep the information away from you. They do very little proactive disclosure. Proactive disclosure would save money. It would also allow you to know better about government. And I think if you knew better about government, there would be people in government who wouldn't have their jobs that would have to find something else to do. Um, so there's a government department, the, it's called Information Access Operations Provincially, and there's departments in city halls, there's departments federally, there's departments in crown corporations and agencies that do the same thing, uh, some better than others. There are some very good people on the inside of these departments that know their jobs and know that they're loyal to the citizens because the citizens ultimately own government. And there's others, though, who are under the thumb of politicians because politicians are permanently campaigning and don't want certain information out there in the public domain for fear of not getting reelected. So, uh, of course, information is power. Um, you know, I wish I didn't have to file as many FOI requests as I do, although I wish governments would just open up. I'm also disappointed I can't do more. <laughs> um, it's, it's quite a, a revelation to find out, to learn what you can find out about government by seeing calendars, by seeing email, by seeing reports, by seeing contracts and invoices. Um, you can learn a lot about this very large edifice that, that ultimately we own. And uh, the more we know, the more we can make it better. Uh, I've uh, found out uh, through various documents in the past about stories or, or they turned into stories like this one back in 2016 i remember back on election day in 2015 there was a government news release that they were releasing a report that day about uh, the response to a children and family development uh, uh, investigation by the representative for children and youth the foster children's advocate who uh, did a story, did an investigation of a very sad story of a teenage girl uh, who had so much trouble in her life, an indigenous girl. Uh, she was bounced around from foster home to foster home. Uh, she was a victim of abuse, of neglect, of addiction, and uh, fell through the cracks. Her name was Paige. 
and the uh, representative for children and youth, Mary Ellen Turpel Lafond, who was very a very good thorn in the side of government for so many years. She ordered the government to respond to her report. The government decided to respond to the report, release uh, it on the day of the election in 2015. And I knew there had to be a story behind that. And I did an FOI to get the email to find out what the uh, staff behind the scenes were doing to set that up. And yeah, that was their decision. They, they decided to put that report out there on election day in the afternoon, election day in 2015, when the biggest story in the country was the federal election. They wanted this story to come and go and wanted the reporters to ignore it because they had more to do because Canada was electing a new federal government. Um, I have covered Vancouver City Hall for so many years and uh, Penny Ballum was the city manager at the time. Gregor Robertson and Vision Vancouver were the, uh, the party in power. Jeff Meggs, who's now in the Premier's office working as John Horgan's chief of staff, they were all there for so many years from 2008 until 27, 2018. Um, yeah, uh, there was a noticeable uh, unhelpfulness trend towards uh, trans towards secrecy in Vancouver City Hall. I made many complaints to the Information Privacy Commissioner's office. I got a lot of stories, but I got a lot of stonewalling. And the Information Privacy Commissioner took the complaints from me and other reporters, no matter their members of the public, did an investigation and found out that yes, indeed, uh, the odds were stacked against the public, the odds were stacked against the media, Vancouver City Hall was doing this on purpose, and she found the in 2016, Vancouver City Hall was breaking the law of a key section, which is called duty to assist. Our governments have a duty to assist people who want information about the government. It's in the law, and some do it, some don't. Unfortunately, the uh, consequences are very, very minimal. Uh, you came a story a couple of years ago about uh, BC Hydro and its ad campaign. Uh, you might have seen the, the chap with the, uh, the, the red hair and the red beard. Uh, uh, they do some very engaging TV ads and internet ads. And uh, he, he did this road trip uh, with an electric vehicle from Vancouver Island to the border of Alberta, you know, Vancouver Island to the Rockies. And, and he was touting all the virtues of electric vehicles and how good they are for the environment. Um, it was a $220,000 ad campaign, but I found out by doing FOI requests for travel expenses and the ad campaign that uh, he was taking airplanes, flying from Vancouver Island back to the lower mainland, from, flying from the lower mainland to the Okanagan, flying from uh, lower main and back again, and flying from the lower mainland to, uh, you know, Revelstoke area closer to the Rockies, uh, a lot of flights and a lot of emissions. So on the one hand, the public face of BC Hydro through this ad campaign was electric vehicles are great. And look, our spokesman is using an electric vehicle behind the scenes. He was using airplanes. He was adding to pollution and adding to extra expenditures. This was really false advertising. I uncovered that about BC Hydro again through freedom of information. Um, more recently, uh, also a couple years ago, uh, Justin Trudeau was getting ready for the 2019 election. He's getting ready for another election this summer. Well, in 2019, it was a fixed election date. He spent a lot of time in airplanes going back and forth across the country, doing a lot of funding announcements and photo ops. Um, at the end of August in 2019, he came to BC and he had a photo op with John Horgan and a photo op with Gregor Robertson. Um, I sorry, pardon me, a photo op with uh, Kennedy Stewart, who was mayor at the time. I'm mixing my dates, but uh, Kennedy Stewart was mayor of Vancouver. John Horgan was premier of BC. Uh, but during that trip, uh, I found out, and I was there when it happened, when he showed up with the motorcade at Grouse Mountain to do the Grouse Grind, to film a campaign ad on the Grouse Grind, um, as he did in 2015. He did a sequel in 2019. Um, that was a very expensive one, and I found out that it cost $54,000 for the trip uh, for his uh, uh, federal military uh, Challenger jet that ferried him and his entourage to the West Coast and back. Very expensive trip. The Liberal Party didn't pay a dollar or a penny for that one. It was all on our shoulders, so Canadians essentially subsidized the Prime Minister's campaign ad. 
back in 2019. So I found that out by making an access to information request to the federal government. More recently, stories about the pandemic, I found out that BC actually uh, had very little in its stockpile of PPE, of masks and gloves uh, coming into the pandemic. The, the NDP did very, very poorly to manage the emergency stockpiles. And uh, since SARS happened, uh, you know, the authorities said, you've got to get ready for uh, you've got to get ready for uh, a pandemic and you've got to have these stockpiles. Uh, and BC wasn't prepared. I found that out from an FOI request to the uh, agency that buys medical supplies for the government. And uh, also last year, the pandemic, uh, price gouging was happening. I found out that there were more than 2,000 complaints about price gouging. I did this story in conjunction with CTV when we want to uh, Webster Award as a team for stories about the pandemic and the economic impacts. And um, 2,000 complaints, the NDP said it was going to get tough, but it never really got tough. Uh, they had enough evidence to issue fines, but they didn't. I found that out about via, via FOI as well. So here we are, the five W's and one H of an FOI. I'm going to tell you how you can file your own FOI requests. Now, FOI, it's, it's, uh, it's for you. You can ask for any public records. It's your right. You don't need to be a reporter like me. Uh, it's the public. And uh, we can ask for anything. That doesn't mean we're going to get everything because there are exceptions in the law, certain personal information, police investigation evidence, internal advice. They can keep things away from us. What? Well, government records are public records. Public records can include documents and photos and video recordings, audio recordings, email, letters, reports, you name it. Government records are public records and public records belong to the people. Uh, things that I get a, on a regular basis include calendars and expense reports, briefing notes, consultants reports, audit reports. You can learn a lot about who is paid by us and whether they do their job through FOI. When? Well, anytime, but expect delays. Now, the law says that uh, the BC law is based on work days, not calendar days, so it takes longer. Public bodies have 30 business days to respond to you. Then they can delay another 30 days to ask a third party for advice or permission to release or not release records. They can go to the information commissioner. The information commissioner is the regulator, the referee. They can ask for longer delays. If they don't meet the deadlines, well, that's called deemed refusal, and that's when you can complain immediately to the Information and Privacy Commissioner to say, hey, tell the government to give me my records. Now, the OIPC works slowly, and it doesn't have the power to punish with fines, so they can only do so much. Where? Well, local city hall, all the way to the Premier's office, all the way to the Prime Minister's office. You know, to BC Hydro and ever, everything in between, even the Surrey Police Service, uh, even though it doesn't operate yet, uh, you can try to find out how many bullets they bought. You know, what are Norm Lipinski's lunch receipts? Although I'm learning that he doesn't have many lunch receipts, he's got a lot of dry cleaning receipts. I found that interesting. Did a story last week. You can find out our internal correspondence about media coverage, what they're saying about what the media is saying. That's sometimes very interesting to find out. You can ask for it all. Now, BC legislature, unfortunately, is still not FOIable. Um, the NDP promised that after Daryl Klekas uh, and Alan Mullen uncovered the spending scandal in the clerk's office and the sergeant at arms office. That still is an, a broken promise. Um, same thing with Parliament Hill. Uh, the House of Commons is not FOIable. That's a strange thing. Even though they spend a lot of our money, they sometimes do release information on a quarterly basis about how they're spending money, but you can't make an FOI request to them to get what you need to get more information about how they spend money. Uh, each ministry and agency has an FOI office. Some are friendlier than others. Some clerks will answer questions and help you get what you want. They're all supposed to, but there is political interference often and influence that makes it harder, especially when a reporter uh, asked for information because they know what people like me want to do with the information. I want to tell the public. I want to tell millions of people around BC what's going on. And the politicians do their best to try to get in the way. It's not supposed to happen. 
but it does. And evidence uh, comes up every once in a while. We saw in 2015 with the triple delete scandal with the BC Liberals and lo and behold, the NDP, when they got into office, they were also deleting information. Um, and they haven't fulfilled promises to change the law and make it a stronger law. Well, why? Uh, FOI is a check on power. It's an anti-corruption measure. It's our right and it flows from the constitution. Um, it allows us to ask, is government too big or too small? Is it doing its job to keep our communities safe? Is it doing its job to uh, spend wisely? The right to know is quasi-constitutional. How is the next question? And the five W's and one H of FOI, it's the key one. I'm gonna give you a step-by-step -step guide to file your first FOI. Now, uh, I'll help you find the public body that you need to talk to on the web 24 seven or a call an email during business hours. Um, you, you need to know what you want. You've got to do advanced research. Don't seek too much and don't seek too little. You've got to be ready to negotiate. You've got to be ready to wait. Uh, you got to be focused. You don't ask for the mayor's email for all of 2020. They'll tell you, they'll send you an invoice. They love to send invoices. They'll, they'll tell you it'll cost 10,000 bucks or so. It'll take 100 hours. They'll, they'll find big numbers to try to dazzle you with, to try to shut down your, your search. But things like you, you can ask for, uh, ask for the mayor's calendar. Like for last November and December, if you want to know what Mayor Doug McCallum is doing, ask for his mayor for a couple of months, then read the calendar and see who he's meeting and talking to. Um, then you can say, well, I want to know what he was talking to, uh, why he was talking to a certain person for a period of time. I want to get the email back and forth between Mayor Doug McCallum um, and others that he's uh, dealing with. And um, what you want to do is, uh, I'll show you this real quickly. There are websites that you can contact. Surrey has a very easy website. You can fill out the form. City of Vancouver has a website form to fill out your information. Same thing with the BC government, the federal government as well. Uh, federal government takes payments, $5 payment per FOI request, access to information request is what it's called. The others are free to make your application. Again, the more you ask for, the more likely they're gonna come back with an invoice for you and demand you pay. Do your best to narrow it down and do your best if they do uh, become difficult to say, I, I don't want to pay. I don't, I can't afford. Do whatever you can to negotiate with them. The law says they have to negotiate with you. So I will give you more information after we take a short break. Hey, welcome back to the meeting. Welcome back to the meeting about freedom of information. One, government information is your information how to get it. So how to get it, this is where the rubber hits the road. The five W's, the one H of FOI, the H is how. I'm gonna give you a bit of a step-by-step -step guide to file your first FOI. Uh, or if you filed FOIs before, how to tell you how you can do it even better than you've done it before. First of all, it's very important. You gotta know where the records might be, who might be holding what you want, You've got to know a little bit about what you want. You've got to know which public body it is. Uh, governments now have uh, FOI offices, agencies have FOI offices, crown corporations, federally, provincially, municipally, uh, except of course, as I told you, the House of Commons and the legislature of Victoria. Um, those bodies themselves, you can't file an FOI or access to information to them. It's a bit archaic. Um, it's something you should talk to your MP about. It's something you should talk to your MLA about. Um, so you can find the public body on the web 24 seven, do a Google search, um, municipally, provincially, FOI, uh, oh, one more person's coming in. Welcoming back to Donna. So again, FOI, the five W's, one H of FOI, step-by-step -step guide to file your first FOI, find the public body, do Google search, uh, look on the website for the, the agency, for the department, for the government. 
if you still can't find the information, you can uh, call them during business hours. Uh, they have an FOI office. Someone there can help you find who you need to talk to. You got to know what you want. You got to do some advanced research of, of what you want. Um, you've got to be focused uh, because the more you're focused on what you want, the easier it'll be to get, the less chance they'll send you an invoice. Uh, if it's provincial or municipal, they don't invoice you anymore federally after you pay your five buck fee. So you got to know a little bit what you want, uh, who you want it from, which office you want it from, the dates, the date range, um, you know, the report name. You do some advanced research. The more research you do in advance, the better you can be to go to the table to ask. And, you know, be ready to negotiate. The, if the clerk is doing their job, they'll come back and say, well, we don't have that, but we got this. Or, or you're asking for a little too much, but here's an idea on how we can focus on it. Again, you don't want to ask for the mayor's year-long email because that's just impossible. Um, as I said, that they, they have websites that are easy to use. And you can also send an email, direct email. You don't always have to use the form that's on the website. You can send an email uh, that's usually listed on the web page. Now the basics. Uh, to write your FOI request, send by email or fill out the form. Basically, you want to tell them that this is a request under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act for the following public records. Uh, you got to remind them that this is not something that goes to another department, that is, this is going to the FOI office. Describe what you are uh, seeking, what you're seeking. Oops, I made a mistake there. Describe what you're seeking. Sorry, editing on the fly. Sometimes I have to do that on a daily basis. So describe what you're seeking. Be as specific as you can be after your research. Refer to dates, topics, names, titles if possible such as, for instance, uh, you want to find out Mayor Doug McCallum and staff what they sent and received an email back and forth with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his staff for June uh, to July 10th of this year. You want to find out about, uh, you know, the Prime Minister's trip to Surrey City Hall to make that big funding announcement. You can find out that pretty easily by uh, sending an email to Surrey City Hall. You've got to include your name, your phone number, and your email. You, you don't have to include anything else. Uh, some government agency used to want to see your, your driver's license or whatever. You don't need to do that. Just your name, your phone number, and email, where you can be reached by the clerk so that they can communicate back and forth with you. Keep track of your request. Give it your own file number. Now, like I often use the date and department name and my name just on my own computer. Uh, the government office will assign its own file number when it sends you a reply so that they can keep track of it as well. And keep a log in your calendar. You know, the day that you send the FOI request, put that in your calendar. And the day you get the response from the government, the first response, put that in your calendar too, because they'll also give you a due date. And keep track of that due date, because again, if the government office does not respond on time, you can complain to the Information and Privacy Commissioner, and they'll go to work to go get you the documents. They'll start asking questions. Why are you late, government? So federally, there is a $5 per request fee, not a penny more, uh, to get your documents. Provincially, there are fees, not a fee to apply, and they're supposed to give you three hours service free, but after that, they can come back to you and say they'll charge you 30 bucks an hour or more to search and handle the records. You gotta be careful about that, so that's why you need to be focused and be specific about what you want. They can't charge for electronic records anymore, so they can't charge you for PDFs. They used to charge a lot for, for photocopying. Um, if they're stubborn for some reason, uh, sometimes they are because there may be too many records or because they don't want the records out, as I often find as a reporter, they will try to be stubborn with a fee invoice. There is a way out of that. You can ask for a public interest fee waiver. You can try to prove to them that the information that they're holding, that you have a right to get, should not have a fee attached because it's important for the public to know, to understand about spending, to understand about policy making, that there's a public debate, there's a lot of media attention. Public interest can sometimes win out 
And again, if the government isn't being helpful, Information Privacy Commissioner can sort it out and make a decision. The fee waiver application is pretty simple. Step one, do the, do the records that you request relate to a matter of public interest? Step two, should you be excused from paying all or part of the fee? If you can make a case that the records you're wanting are important for the public to know, important for people in your community to know, in records that the media is debating, records that the politicians are debating, um, then that's a way to make that case. The problem is you're making the case to the same people who sent you the invoice, and sometimes they'll kick it over to the legal department and they'll sit back and say, yeah, you know what, maybe we shouldn't be charging for this because yeah, it is uh, a matter of public debate. Politicians are debating it, the media is covering it. We, we better just give this up. Uh, and that's why you say you should be excused from all or part of the fee. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a $5 request federally, not a penny more. Uh, one of the agencies that does charge that is of course the RCMP. Um, I've had some fun with them in the past. They actually, for a period of time, a few years ago, stopped responding to, to access to information requests. Even after taking the $5, I had a fun conversation with an RCMP officer at headquarters uh, saying, well, hey, uh, you've got my $5. You won't give me my records because of the backlog. Um, uh, this is theft. Who do I call? Who would I call to investigate to, to get my records and get my $5 back? Um, uh, there was uh, awkward silence on the other end of the phone call. Um, the interesting part, though, is that uh, with the Surrey, the Surrey police, um, one of the senior lawyers there who has a record of uh, acting on uh, or being the FOI gatekeeper for the RCMP and E division is a fellow named Kyle Friesen. He went from RCMP E division. He's now working for the Surrey Police Service, and he's the architect of their FOI office. And uh, um, I've had some conversations with him, and and uh, explained to him uh, that uh, he needs to do his job better because the public is his ultimate employer. So governments are constantly doing deals with private companies, whether it's for advertising, vehicles, consultant reports. We got a right to know those contracts and see the invoices. Governments will try to hide the information because they say they are trade secrets, but they can't. I, I keep winning those cases at the Information Privacy Commissioner, so don't let them tell you it's a secret. They, they can keep things away from us. Cabinet confidences, so the BC government cabinet, for 15 years, they can keep records secret. So what they talk about today, their agendas and minutes of cabinet meetings today, in 2021, you'll have to wait to 2036 to get them. Again, third-party business interests, that can only go so far. That can get defeated quite often. Uh, personal privacy, of course, is harder to get. Uh, we can't get personal phone numbers, banking information for our politicians. That's off, off limits. Um, a lot of things are off limits when it comes to uh, personal privacy. There are discretionary exceptions that they can or cannot place and sometimes those can be debated as well. Policy advice is one that is very tr troublesome because the, uh, the politicians pay a lot of people, nonpartisan public servants to give them advice, but the courts have said that they can keep that advice and those recommendations secret, which is unfortunate because we, we should have a right to know what our bureaucrats are telling our politicians and whether the politicians are listening to the good advice from the nonpartisan bureaucrats. Solicitor client privilege, uh, legal advice, that's off limits. You know, that, that includes invoices for legal advice. That includes actual uh, legal opinion uh, briefs that are written to the politicians or to the bureaucrats from lawyers in-house or outside government. We can't get those. Law enforcement, there's a wide, wide range uh, that police and other law enforcement bodies can keep secret because they need to keep the evidence, uh, what they gather, uh, a secret until, of course, they give it to Crown Counsel to uh, to swear charges or to put it in front of a judge in court. Intergovernmental relations, there's some uh, information that we can't see that goes between governments from city halls to federal, uh, from provincial offices to federal and back and forth. They can keep some things secret on that. Section 17, financial economic interests of public bodies. Uh, again, the contracts can sometimes be, uh, they can try to keep them secret, but I often defeat that. We do have a right to know 
uh, how our government spends money. Sometimes governments will invoke Section 17 when they shouldn't be doing it. So that means go ahead and complain to the Information Privacy Commissioner if you see that. Heritage sites, also individual or public safety, that connects to law enforcement sometimes. Section 20 is another clause that sometimes governments will play games with you about, that information that they don't want out except on their own terms. So sometimes they'll say, well, this information has got to come out somehow. We're not going to give it to the FOI requester. So give it to the PR department first at, government, at the government office. Let them figure out a way of gently letting this out uh, if it's embarrassing information. That sometimes buys them some time. Uh, I mentioned the Information and Privacy Commissioner. That's the OIPC provincially. There's also a federal information commissioner. These offices have the same kind of uh, mandate, which is to investigate, investigate complaints, uh, investigate complaints of governments not releasing information or governments actually releasing private information, privacy breaches. They, they've got to look at that here in BC. The, there's one office which handles both sides of the equation. Federally, there's an information commissioner and federally, there's a privacy commissioner, two separate offices. But in BC, it's all under the one roof. And that's their job is to uh, investigate when you or I uh, are, are up against a government that doesn't want to give us information or doesn't want to give us information on time. And of course, they also uh, handle complaints about privacy breaches. Now, finally, uh, always remember, always remember, because governments will never, never learn no matter what, they'll, they'll always try to use their power against you. But this is a 2005 editorial cartoon from a newspaper in, in Missouri. Uh, there's someone in the government office right here. Sign says private keep out, government here, right here. Uh, peeking their head out the window, or the, or the door, I mean, at uh, a taxpayer. Saying, and you think you can just come barging in here like you own the place? The taxpayer says, uh, actually, I do own the place. So always, always remember that, that uh, their job is to serve you. Their job is to help you better understand how your government is acting on a day-to-day -day basis, what they're spending your money on, whether they're meeting their obligations to your community when it comes to uh, safety, education, healthcare, all the things that you rely on them to do, you've got a right to ask them to show you what's in their files. And again, as I explained, there are certain exceptions and there are certain ways that you can go forward to make a complaint to the information commissioner if you're not getting what you want, if you're not getting what you have the right to get. So thank you for joining me uh, tonight. 